Now I want you to help me work out what would this look like for this shape? Well, pi is pi. Pi is just a number, so it's always going to stay the same. Okay. Where is the radius on this cylinder? Where is it? Can you draw it in? Here's the center, right? And then the radius of this cylinder will be this. Now, have a look. What direction does this line, this radius, go in? It goes up and down, right? Now, I've got two axes here, and they have different names. So which axis is the up and down one? This is going to be the y, isn't it? In fact, that's what this curve is. This is y equals a particular thing, right? So when you want to know how high it is, you say, oops, wrong color. You say y. Now, what do we do to the radius in the formula? We square it. Pi r squared, where in this case the radius is that. OK, now what about the width, or I should say the height, of this cylinder? What is this thing? Now, this is this infinitesimally thin width, just like I had an infinitesimally thin width here. It's a width, though. It goes horizontally, doesn't it? So I go pi r squared. In this case, my h is that. Does that make sense? OK, see that object there? That's a cylinder, one of them. But one of them does not make the whole solid. I need to sum all of them, don't I? So thankfully, I have good notation for this. I'm going to start with the smaller cylinder, which is over here. I shouldn't say smallest. It might be bigger. I'm going to start with the leftmost cylinder, and then I'm going to progress all the way through until I get to the rightmost cylinder, like so. That's area. This is volume. This is the formula for the volume of a solid of revolution. Okay, bit of a mouthful. But I want you to remember what this is. What are you adding up? Well, this 3D shape is basically made of a whole bunch of cylinders. So just add up a whole bunch of cylinders. Okay? Now, don't write this, but you will often see in textbooks and notes from tutoring colleges and all that kind of thing, you will see this formula written ever so slightly differently. You'll see it written like this. Now, are these formulas going to give me the same answer? Answer, yes, because pi is just a number like 8 or 19. So you, you can take numbers, constants, out like that. Okay? But I do not like writing it like this. I do not like it. That's why I've written it like this. Can you tell me why? Can you give me a reason why this is a better way to write it than this? Not much of a difference. It will give you the same answer. You won't lose a mark if you use the second one. I like to write things in ways that save me time or that make things easier. They're all generally things that I like. Okay? There is not really any time saving between these two things. But what will happen is when you see this formula and you're struggling in the middle of an exam to remember it and you're in a rush, you won't write this. You'll write this. Because you're like, that's not important. All my brain effort is going here. Okay? I have seen it thousands of times. I'm not even exaggerating. Thousands of times I've had to write, forgot the pi, forgot the pi, forgot the pi. Because people don't think about it because it's been taken out of the formula. When you see the formula like this, it does two really helpful things. It helps you remember, there's a pi in there, don't leave it out. Okay? But even more importantly than that, it points to me at this. This is what you're dealing with. You're dealing with what kind of objects? Cylinders. You're just adding up a whole bunch of them. I would prefer to write something in a way that makes clear what you're doing as opposed to obscures what you're doing. Maybe makes it slightly easier to compute, but like, what am I even moving around with these simples? Answer, this is what I'm moving around. Okay. So I'm just going to jump in at question three, partly because we can hijack the diagram that we used just now. 3C involves a volume of a solid revolution formed from the area beneath a parabola. Okay, so it's literally the same parabola. Okay? It says calculate the volume generated when each shaded region, just like we have a shaded region here, is rotated about the x-axis. Okay? So let's have a look at 3C. I have a formula over here. I have a formula over here. 
Um, one of the things that weirds people out a little bit is that you're integrating something with y's in it and you're apparently integrating with respect to x. Well, the reason why I can do that is because I usually know what y is in terms of x. So let's have a go at this. For 3c, the first thing I'll write is v equals, because I'm working out a volume, and then I begin to use this formula. Integral of, where are my boundaries? Have a look at the diagram. 0 and 2 from 0 to 2. The thing that I'm adding up is a bunch of cylinders. So the very first thing that appears in the cylinder formula is a pi. So I write down a pi. Now, the next piece is y squared. y squared. Well, in this case, y is equal to x squared. So when I square everything, I get x to the power of 4 with respect to x. And that was it. The volume formula is not hard to use. There's just some conceptual mechanics you need to wrap your head around. This is no longer a volume question, in a sense. It's just, it's just an integral, right? You don't need to know anything about volumes to do this. I've got a um, definite integral here. Can someone tell me what the primitive is? Pi, pi x to the 5 divided by the new power, 5. And then, of course, I've got my boundaries, 0 and 2. All good? Now I can evaluate. That looks to me like 32 pi on 5. As I've pointed out before, but it's worth reminding, I have to do the lower boundary even when it doesn't actually equal to anything. Minus 0. Easy trap to fall into because sometimes, like say for example I had x to the, sorry, I had like, um, oh yeah, no, x to the power of, no, that's a bad example. 5 to the power of x would be a better example. Well, 5 to the power of x, if x was 0, it doesn't just disappear, right? That's, that's 1. So please get in the habit of writing the lower boundary. Even though a huge proportion of them will be 0, write it anyway. 32 pi on 5. Have I answered the question? No. I have not. So very close. What do I need to include? This is a volume, right? So I would conclude volume is... 32 pi on 5 units cubed. It's okay if you just write units cubed on the end, but I still like to write it properly. Okay? Happy? Make sense?